Megatron has been in showbiz for quite a while now, and despite several appearances in live action movies, all his powers and abilities have yet not been depicted. It's a shame, really, because this guy can do a ton of things that many superheroes from Marvel and DC can only dream of doing. So in this video, we'll explore the 12 hidden powers of Megatron. Consider yourself a true Transformer fan if you know even six of these. Let's begin, shall we? Now before we go into the video, we have a small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means an awful lot. Thank you very much, now let's begin. Is he the vampire of the Transformers franchise? Well, Megatron in himself is a great force to reckon with, but when he turns into Galvatron, his powers get a super max boost. And yes, he is something of a vampire of the Transformer franchise. But how does this vampirism work? You see, when Megatron transformed, or rather leveled up into Galvatron, he got this ability to suck the energy from just about any other Cybertronian. Of course, Megatron is not really the guy who plays by the rules, so the level up and the energy sucking come with a price, especially for his allies. To give himself some extra juice, Megatron's first victims were his friends, aka the Decepticons, whose energy he sucked up and left them with just enough life force to remain barely alive. Once he became super mighty, he turned to his foes, aka Autobots. But you also must know that his vampirism is what caused his fall as well. In the episode titled The Final Battle, the mighty Optimus and his brother Ultra Magnus merged together to form this transformer called the Omega Prime. This guy managed to release every bit of energy that Megatron had sucked as Galvatron and the effect was such that the big guy found himself defeated in an instant. Oh, and there was a massive explosion. And you are not one of us. He can create a zombie transformer. I'm pretty sure this is one of the most obscure abilities that Megatron has. So in Darkness Rising Part 1, Megatron had this great idea. He was all like, let me use the blood of Unicron to bring back my fallen friends. So he went on to use Unicron's blood, which was filled with Dark Energon, on an Autobot called Cliff Jumper. Lo and behold, the stuff worked and Cliff Jumper was reanimated in the form of a zombie Terracon. After this, he felt like he could actually create an army of unended Cybertronians, but unfortunately the plan never really turned into reality. In the IDW continuity, more specifically Transformers Regeneration 1, Megatron did build an army of undead Cybertronians, although most of these were fallen Decepticons who had been slain because of the underbase empowered Starscream. In fact, Starscream himself was lobotomized. Interestingly enough, this was also the story where Optimus Prime destroyed Megatron once and for all. Optimus brought an assault team from his home planet and together they brought Megatron down. These Transformer zombies appeared for the final time in IDW's 2016 comic titled Transformers Titans Return. There, city-sized Titan Transformers fell victim to a zombie outbreak. Although it may seem like a bizarre trope to have undead machines fighting one another, I believe it could be used to bring an element of horror into the live-action movies. I mean, they kind of tried to do something like that in The Rise of the Beasts, but yeah, a full-fledged Transformer zombie movie might be fun to watch. <laughs> he has the power of Force Lightning. Shooting energy from the hand is one of the most OG powers anyone in comics can have. I mean, the stuff has been in comics since an eternity, and Iron Man still uses it like it's a novel concept. When it's good enough for one mechanical hero, it's good enough for the rest of them as well, including the villains. So, in an episode called Microbots from Generation 1, Megatron got enough window to dodge the Autobots to find himself this ancient and buried spacecraft. He then used the spacecraft's core and powered himself up. The result? Well, it gave him the boost he was looking for, and he suddenly started shooting ping lightning from his hands as if he also got the power up that Godzilla got in Godzilla X Kong. Of course, he also managed to stop the heroes and the good guys for a little while. But they were wearing plot armor, and Megatron didn't know this, so his victory came to a pause when the heroes blew up a hill. Literally. After this, Megatron and his friends came to their base camp and got shit drunk, or, you know, robot drunk. Now, you might find this hard to believe, but that was exactly what happened. I mean, they all chugged Energon so much so that Megatron himself passed out. This bought the Autobots enough time to shrink, a nod to the episode's title of Micro Bots, and that's how they managed to separate Megatron's energy source to save the day. Megatron's fusion cannon linked to black hole energy. Megatron's fusion cannon is his go-to weapon, and in fact, it's his strongest. This device packs such a punch, it could even knock off Ironhide's head. It's so strong that it puts Autobots and Decepticons alike on edge, even if its power seems a bit inconsistent. Once Megatron arrived on Earth, he felt his cannon put him ahead and made him more powerful than just about anyone else. Now, this also kept Starscream's betrayals in check. True to form, he used it to blast Starscream, and then went on a rampage against the Autobots. In fact, Megatron even took off Optimus Prime's arm with the fusion 
cannon. When Shockwave took over, Megatron tried to blast him away but ended up losing the leadership battle. Attempting to take the arc with Decepticon forces, he didn't count on Omega Supreme's shields which shrugged off the fusion cannon's blasts. Being saved from Laserbeak was the only thing that got him out of there. Hunting Optimus Prime, Megatron got double-crossed by the Predacons, who stole his cannon. However, he ended up with a new one after a space bridge pulled him and Prime back to Cybertron. But the Predacons and Shockwave weren't done. They ambushed him again in Florida, though he got his cannon back just in time to beat Predaking and catch Shockwave in his scheme. However, Megatron's own actions with the space bridge and his cannon caused his disappearance. His bio hints at a wild power to tap into the black holes for antimatter weapons. Simon Furman expanded on this in one of his comics with Megatron, causing explosions with antimatter through his body. In the G1 animated series, he's got the unique trick of creating black holes, using them to pull in enemies or toss debris at them. He can even link to distant black holes, bending space and time to his advantage. Megatron's double Megatron tornado engulfs foes in unstoppable cyclones of destruction. In the Transformers Robot Masters, we meet a new Megatron disguised as Reverse Convoy. Of course, a plot twist never hurts anyone and therefore he teams up with the OG Megatron for a double Megatron tornado move. These over-the-top moves are pure animated gold and don't hold your breath for them in live-action movies. Safe to say that the Robot Master series, with its toys, comics and DVD episodes, well, they're a true gem as far as the Transformers saga are concerned. When Optimus Prime and Optimus Primal combine their powers for the double convoy tornado, you just have to fall in love with these machines. It sounds nuts, and it is, but it's entertaining too. Laser Eyes, because even evil robots deserve laser shows. Optic weaponry basically means Megatron and other Transformers can shoot lasers from their eyes, just like Cyclops from X-Men or Superman, the OG master blaster of all things laser. Even Optimus Prime and all the Predacons in Beast Wars have this ability. Surprisingly, this eye-popping power hasn't shown up in the movies, missing a chance for some classic Michael Bay explosions. The closest we get is in the Twilight Last Gleamings comic arc, where Megatron goes full laser face against Optimus. This storyline was part of a 2007 movie tie-in by UK Titan magazines. In the original animated series, Megatron's eye lasers are more funny than fierce. Unintentionally funny, that is. He uses them to spook some race fans in the Autobot run story, instead of going full villain mode. This scene was probably too dark for Saturday morning television, though, even without Megatron turning into a gun with a past. He has many alternate modes. Originally, Megatron turned into a Walther P-39 handgun, but the whole gun thing just wasn't for him. I mean, this guy is the biggest enemy of Optimus Prime, so he's gotta be more than just a handgun, right? So they switched him up to a tank in Generation 2. Cobra from G.I. Joe lore even hooked him up with his new tank body in the Marvel comics. In Beast Wars and Beast Machines, Megatron went prehistoric as a T-Rex and then a dragon, which is pretty cool to be honest. Transformers Robots in Disguise saw him morphing into everything from a dragon to a jet. Armada Megatron was back to being a tank, but then switched it up to a jet and a race car in the Unicron trilogy. On the other hand, the movies have seen him as a jet, a tank, and even a semi-truck, throwing some shade at Optimus Prime. He's mostly stuck with tank mode since, even in the updated forms. He's also transformed into an elephant, a griffin, a hydrofoil, a pterodactyl, and of course there's Galvatron, which can be considered another alternative mode. Lord Megatron, get that out of my face. Megatron's power to manipulate mass and size. Megatron turning into a gun sounds cool until you realise nobody can use it without him shrinking down. That's how the writers made it work. Megatron could miniaturise himself so his Decepticon buddies or even humans could fire him. This workaround was dreamt up to make a sense of a robot toy that morphs into a gun. But the first Transformers movie team called that cheating and switched Megatron into a jet for a more believable story. Over time, comics and cartoons ditched Megatron's size shifting trick, even though it pops up now and then. It's a stretch for the live action movies to show, but with humans teaming up with Cybertronians, they're bound to come up with some other cool teamworks. Megatron. He can merge his body with Unicron. In the Unicron trilogy from the Transformers animated series, Primus tries locking up with Unicron's spark in the sun, but it backfires, causing a black hole near Cybertron. Megatron, dodging a solar demise, powers up by merging with Unicron's leftovers. This boosts him to a triple changer, letting him switch between a plane and a race car. He also scores rear missile launchers, energy generators, speedy thrusters, and a wicked battle claw named the Death Claw. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
He can convert his hand into a powerful weapon called Energon Mace. Right from the start in the TV series pilot, Megatron and Optimus Prime went at it on the Sherman Dam. They upped the ante by pulling out energy weapons. Optimus with an energy axe and Megatron with an energy mace. Of course, the trash talk flew as they juked it out. Megatron got the drop on Optimus when he got distracted by Spike with Wiki, allowing which Megatron to send Prime tumbling off the dam. Although it was one of the first fight sequences, it was a pretty great one. Despite the medieval vibe of their weapons, the two warriors brought the flair to the battle, making it memorable. Later, with his Omega Wave Cannon busted by Starscream, Megatron found himself cornered by Prime once again. Quick on the draw, he deployed his energy mace once more. But the tide turned fast when Metroplex showed up and sent Megatron and his Decepticons on a trip to Loserville. By my own hand, at will, whenever I desire. He can transfer his conscience into others. Dan Gilvaizam was the voice behind Bumblebee in the classic 1984 Transformers series. In Transformers Prime from 2010, Bumblebee had a slightly different voice thanks to a battle injury from Megatron, which was similar to what happened in the 2007 movie. To cure Optimus Prime from the Cybonic Plague, Bumblebee dove into Megatron's mind. However, Megatron swapped minds with Bumblebee. Now Megatron in Bumblebee's body goes after Ratchet and got some dark energon from the Autobots, but Bumblebee's strong will fought back which helped the Autobots swap their minds back to where they belonged. The end is near, my old treacherous friend. Oh, she's coming. He can be resurrected. In the Transformers the movie, Unicron finds a dying Megatron and transforms him into Galvatron using his magic mojo or whatever you want to call it. The Marvel Comics also shows Galvatron as a future version of Megatron which actually leads to a scene where Megatron meets Galvatron. However, Beast Wars Megatron gets new forms but never takes the name Galvatron. In Transformers Prime, Megatron's upgrade screams Galvatron without actually using the name. The Unicron trilogy and Transformers robots in disguise from the 2000s do turn Megatron into Galvatron but it's more of a repaint job than a whole new form. The robots in disguise version, called Gigatron in Japan, got more modes thanks to extra toy parts. In the live action movies, humans turn Megatron's remains into Galvatron who later ditches the new name to be Megatron again. In the live action Transformers movies, Megatron often steps up as the biggest, baddest guy who leads the Decepticons. But in movies like Bumblebee and Transformers Rise of the Beasts, Decepticons take a backseat, so Megatron's not around so much. Michael Bay's movies though, have always had him front and centre as the lead villain. The films show off Megatron's strength, toughness and speed. He can zap electricity, mess with radio waves, throw down in a fight. He can fly, he can whip up smart battle plans. Still, the movies haven't really fully explored all the tricks that he has up his big metal sleeve from the original stories. Which of the above powers and abilities were you aware of? And by the way, if you like the content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't done so already. Otherwise, have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.